Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another tutorial on making gators. So this is another bonus post. This is my second Inspiration Friday project this week. And I had some great response with the 100% cotton gators that I posted a couple weeks ago. But one of the things that I heard from people is, you commented that you could add a filter pocket to it, but you didn't show us how to do it. So I thought it would be really fun to put together a quick um, tutorial and I'm gonna show you how to make 100% um, cotton gator with a filter pocket. And today's tutorial, instead of using the pull cord that we used last week, I'm gonna show you how to make it with elastic. So happens to be what I have on right now. So if I just pop this right up, you can see I've got a, a cute gator on. You could make this in all different types of material and it just works out great. When I'm not wearing it, I just put it right down. Now, I will tell you that this one does have a filter pocket in it, so I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to make it. Now, if you guys liked the cord that we had um, on the last 100% cotton gator, you absolutely can do that and just add in the filter pocket. I show you at the very beginning of the tutorial how to do the filter pocket. So give me a few seconds. I'm gonna get my camera angle changed and I'm gonna join you um, at my craft table and show you how to make this 100% cotton gator with elastic and a filter pocket. Okay, so let's get going on this gator with 100% cotton material and we're going to add that filter pocket that I mentioned in the intro. Had lots of requests for that. So we are going to use a lot of the same supplies that we did for our last 100% cotton, but I wanted to put another twist on it. Um, I had some people comment about the cord stops um, and that was a good option. But I thought, why not make it with just straight elastic um, instead of the cord stop? And so this one is going to be a 100% cotton gaiter with a filter pocket made with elastic. So basically, um, we are going to measure it the exact same way we did the um, other one. And I'll show you that in just one moment as a reminder but I'm starting out with my base material. Now I'm doing a contrast um, color um, for the pocket just so you guys can see it. No one's gonna see your pocket because it's in the inside. So, you know, grab a scratch um, amount of material, definitely. I'm gonna show you how to measure for the elastic. I always use one of my rulers and my um, rotary blade to do my cutting. So let's figure out how big you need your gator to be and then we'll come back and we'll get started on making this gator. Okay, we're gonna run through a quick measurement tutorial to make the 100% cotton gator. Now, as I've said before, the cotton gators, it's really hard to give a definite um, size. It really is custom fit because the cotton does not stretch like the knit fabric did. So it's really important that you guys do your measurements. So we did this on the last one, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you again. I'm using a tape measure. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna measure what the width is or the circumference of my head is, okay? And mine happens to be 22 inches. I'm gonna add eight inches, okay? So my width of my material I'm cutting out is going to be 30. So now I need to decide how long of a gator I want. How long is it gonna go down? So I made my gator to be 13 inches down, okay? So if I do 13 inches and then I double it, okay? So that means my material is gonna be 30 by 26, okay? It's gonna be this um, distance doubled, okay? So however long, if you want a shorter one, you can do a shorter one. If you wanna do a longer one, you can do a longer one, okay? So double that measurement and then the circumference of your head. Now, for the elastic that we're gonna be using in this one, go back to that 22 that I measured around my head and I like to subtract two inches there. So just a 20 inch piece of fabric, that way the elastic fits you tight. 
Now one thing you can do is before you um, sew in the fabric, the casing, you can double check your sizing, okay? Might be a little bit different for you. But basically what I'm gonna start out with on this tutorial is a 30 by 26 inch piece of fabric. I am gonna do five inches by six inches for a filter pocket and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then I'm gonna cut a 20 inch strip of elastic. So with those things, those measurements, let's get started on making this 100% gator. Okay, so now you know what size you need your gator to be. So my size of gator is um, a 30 inches, and it doesn't quite fit all the way on my mat here, 30 inches by 26. Um, so now the 26, I've already got this folded um, in half, right? So the 26 is how long it's going to be on me. And that's again, you guys, I've commented before, if you want a longer gator or a shorter gator, that is um, the measurement. This width measurement is the one that you want to play with a little bit there. So for the um, filter pocket, that's the very first thing we need to do if we want to add a filter pocket, okay? So what I like to do is I've got my fabric folded in half right sides showing and I'm going to find the placement of where I want to put that filter pocket okay so if I fold my fabric in half again okay if I fold it in half again I'm going to find the center now I like to just take a pin just so I can eyeball it and see it so I'm just going to put a pin right there and then I'm going to open it back up okay so put my pin so I know where my center is Okay, now with this gator, we are also gonna add an elastic top going around it. So my elastic is going to be like right there, right? So when I'm looking at the placement of my filter, thinking where your elastic is gonna go across the bridge of your nose, you wanna come down about two inches, maybe two and a half for your pocket, okay? So if we're looking at our pocket, now I have a pocket that I measured to be um, six inches by five. And where I came up with this measurement for my filter pocket is, went out to Amazon and I see that the standard filters are about 4.7 by 3.1 inches. So I thought if I did a five by six allowing for seam allowance, it would be ample room to be able to put that filter pocket in. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna come down about two inches and we're gonna put that pocket. Now, when we have put filter pockets in our knit fabric, we have just sewn it, right? No problem. But in this case, cotton will ravel, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab out my ironing, um, excuse me, I'm gonna grab out my felt and I am going to press this pocket a little bit so it's got a cleaner finish, okay? So all I'm gonna do is turn it upside down and I am going to just press it, okay? And really we're gonna do this all the way around, you guys. And it's just gonna give it a clean finish. This is also why you wanted that filter pocket to be a little bit bigger um, than the actual filter. And then what we're gonna do, you guys, is we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to attach the filter um, pocket. So, but I like to do this pressing first. It makes the sewing so much easier. And you guys, this does not need to be perfect. No one's gonna see your filter pocket. But the reason why I want to do this finish on it is because when you wash your gator, which I hope you guys are doing quite regularly, is you want to um, make sure that your fabric is not um, raveling, okay? So I've just got a good press on it, okay? So we'll do that. Let me get my mat out of the way. I thought I had a bunch of fabric stuck on that, <laughs> little pieces. Okay, so now let's talk about putting this pocket on, okay? We know we wanna go about two inches down and we want it to be in the center. Okay, so I'm just gonna eyeball the center there. I've got my mat that I can see 
that I'm coming down about two inches, okay? And I'm gonna put it there. But you guys, we do not want to be going through both of um, layers of our fabric. Because remember, we have this folded, right? So I'm just going to put my hands underneath my fabric and I'm going to put one in here and then I'm gonna put the other side in and then we're gonna open it up, you guys. But I like to do this first one so I know I've got the placement. Because when you open this guy up, our piece of material, take that pin out, you'll see our piece of material is pretty big, right? And you wanna make sure that you've got your pocket placed in the right spot, okay? So one other thing that would be a good idea to do, and I should have done this before I started pinning it, you guys, is to run a seam right across the top, okay? Just to finish this piece off. Now you could use some liquid, um, um, excuse me, fabric liquid, like for a seam, or you could also use um, some of this um, tape, which is really nice. Um, and I'll put a link down to it also. Let me just throw it in there. And that way, this will stay right in place. Do that. This is a really great tape to use um, when you're doing um, zippers and stuff too. So it gives a nice finish to it. Now we do still want to put a seam down there, but we know that that is going to stay in place for us. Okay. So what I'm going to do, this is a little awkward, you guys, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to do that top stitch right there. Then what we're going to do on the sewing machine is we're going to start here, back stitch like we always do. So down, across, and up. Leave this open. Really important, you guys. You want to make sure that you've got room to put that filter in. Okay, so I'm going to join you over at the sewing machine and we are going to work on this project. Okay, guys, so I'm joining you over at the sewing machine and I did put a contrasting thread in. I've got a cream colored thread in so you guys are going to be able to see my stitches. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. So I've got my fabric here. We just pinned on our pocket. And remember I told you, you want to put a stitch across the top of the pocket, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm just gonna put that into the sewing machine. I'm gonna raise my foot up and I am just gonna do about a quarter inch seam, you guys, and I'm gonna go straight across, okay? I'm gonna do a little back stitch and then go straight across. gonna clip my threads and there you guys can see that I've got that straight stretch going across okay now what we're gonna do is I am going to go ahead and we are going to sew all the way around except for where we just put that seam in right and we're going to secure our filter pocket okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start at the top okay and I'm again just gonna do a quarter inch seam all the way around. I wanna make sure I leave as much room as possible and I am taking my pins out. Um, trick you guys I learned too is if you face your pins outward as you sew, you can pull them right before they go through. So see how I have these pins facing out. Okay, so I'm gonna do a um, little stitch here. Then I'm gonna do a back stitch and then I'm just gonna stitch all the way around. Okay, quarter inch seam. And you guys, right when I get to the corner, I'm gonna let my needle be in the down position. I'm gonna raise my foot up and I'm gonna turn my material, okay? That way it stays right where you want it to, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and do this next seam.
finish with my needle being down. I'm gonna raise up, back down. Take my needle out. Got a little thread showing there, so I'm just gonna tuck it in. Gonna do a back stitch. and clip my threads. Okay, so we now have got our filter pocket all in ready to go, okay? So now, to change the view of my camera just a little bit so you guys can see, I'm gonna try to stay at the sewing table um, for this project. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna take my fabric, and this is the 30 width, right? It's the long width of my fabric, and I'm gonna fold it in half, okay, with the, okay, so I've got my right sides together. My fold right now is up here. I'm gonna flip it. So what we're gonna do is where my right sides are together on the long seam, okay, we're just gonna sew a straight stitch all the way down that. Now remember you guys when we talked about using um, stretch material when we were making gaiters, I always said use a zigzag stitch, but that's because we were using stretch material, okay? This is cotton. We're just gonna do a straight stitch all the way down. Do a quick little back stitch. Okay, so we've got our seam all the way done, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna turn our gator. Make sure you can put your hand through your gator, very important, okay? You're gonna turn it around, okay? Now, you guys, there is your pocket, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we are going to sew our sides together, okay? So what I do is I put my hand through my gaiter and I always like to have where my seam is, okay? It's an easy thing to match up. So I'm gonna have my seam and I'm going to bring my other one over, okay? And basically, ah, getting ornery today. You're gonna kind of fold your tube in half. And what you're trying to do is you are putting your right sides back together, okay? So it takes a little bit of finagling there, you guys, okay? So now I have got my right sides together of my tube, okay, of my gator. Now, one thing I wanna do is I want to determine where my pocket is, okay? So, if you look, it's probably hard to see, but there's my seam for my pocket, okay? I wanna make sure that that, wherever that pocket is, that's where I'm gonna leave an opening here, okay? So I like to take my pins and mark it because we've gotta have a way to be able to turn our gator right side out, but we want it to be on the inside, that finished seam we do. So this will make sense once we actually turn it. But so I'm gonna leave my opening right here, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching again. Now, if you guys have got a removable arm on your machine, this is a great time to be able to do that. If you don't, um, you just have to work with it a little bit, okay? But we're gonna go ahead. Now in this case, I'm gonna do right about a one inch seam, okay? Guess it would help turn my machine off for some reason. Okay, so I'm gonna do a stitch, I'm gonna do a back stitch, okay? And now where my seams are, I like to lay one one direction and the other the other direction. It just kind of saves a little bit on bulk. Okay, and we're gonna sew away, oops, and we're gonna sew away. And 
and just make sure if you got to play with a little bit, you guys, as you're doing it. I didn't pin this, but you want to make sure your edges are staying together so it's got a nice, nice seam. Now, I still had some of the salvage from my material showing. That's one of the reasons why I chose to do a bigger seam because I didn't want those to show through. Okay, I'm coming to my other pin. So I'm going to go ahead and sew up to it. And I'm going to do a little back stitch. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take our gator and we're going to turn it inside out. And you guys, I haven't forgot about the plastic. That are the plastic. Wow, Lisa can't talk today. I haven't forgot about the elastic. We're gonna get to that in just a second, okay? So now when we turn this right sides out, you've got your tube. And what I like to do is find my seam and kind of bring it that way. Find where that bottom seam is. Just kind of shake it out. Okay. So right now, my pocket's on the inside. Okay. And I've got an opening on the inside still. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we have got to put a channel for the elastic to go through, okay? So this is our last step, you guys. So where I left that opening, okay, I am just going to sew on either side of it. I am gonna start and I am going to do just about a one inch seam um, all the way around. Now, I like to go and make sure that's good with my pocket, right? And it is, so if I just come down about an inch, now I'm gonna, I need to leave some space where I can get in to put my elastic in, right? So what I like to do is, you don't necessarily need to have that start and stop right here. One of the reasons why I like it back here is this is the back of your gator, right? But what you might want to do is come over like right here, just a little bit over from that and we'll leave a little bit of an opening. Okay, and the only reason we're doing that is to be able to thread our elastic through. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, sew, our, sew our round. Now, you guys, I'm gonna be able to, because I've got that opening there, I'm gonna be able to thread that elastic right up there. So make sure that you've got that channel from this opening to where you're at. Hope that makes sense, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find the one inch mark on my foot plate or on the plate of my machine. And I'm just gonna go around and sew a one inch seam, okay? Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and I am gonna grab a safety pin and we are going to put this elastic through. Okay, before I do the elastic, I'm gonna clip a couple of my little seams here. Excuse me, not my seams. Why would I be cutting my seams, Lisa? I'm cutting my threads just to clean it up, okay? And now I've got my elastic and I've got my, remember we left an opening on the inside of our gator that we can thread up to that channel and then we're gonna pull our elastic through, okay? So all I'm doing is threading this through. Now you guys, this is, um, I had said on my last Gator one, when we were using the cord and the cord stop, um, that it, no need for a, a nose guard um, on it because the cord stop was definitely helping pull it tight. Same thing with the elastic, you guys. There's really no reason to put a nose piece in here because this elastic's gonna fit much closer um, to your nose um, 
And so what I'm gonna do is just pull that back through, about all the way through. Now, one thing I do like to take a second to do, you guys, sometimes elastic gets um, twisted. I wanna feel and make sure my elastic has not been twisted, right? Because this is gonna be laying against your face, okay? So then what I like to do is I like to overlap the elastic, okay? And then I am just going to do a zigzag stitch here, okay? Now, one trick I've learned sometimes with elastic is if I put a pin in it when it's overlapped, okay, so I just put a pin right there, and then when I put it into my machine, I bring my needle down, my foot down, and then I take my pin out, okay? Because then I know that it's not gonna come undone. I'm gonna switch it to a, let me bring my needle up now. I'm gonna switch it to a zigzag stitch and I'm just gonna go, and I wanna give this a good, cause this is gonna get pulled on quite a bit, you guys. Okay. Okay, and then I've just done a zigzag stitch right there. I'm gonna go ahead and clip those little threads. Okay, we are just about done, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna pull that in there. You can see I've got some pull on my elastic now. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do two things. One, I want to close off where I've got this opening on the side, right? And I wanna close off where the um, elastic is. So I'm gonna do the elastic one first. Put my needle down. So I've closed that circle off where my elastic went in. So it is not gonna have any chance of coming out. Now you guys, you may have wanted to try this on before you close that off just to make sure that elastic is gonna fit you nice around your head, okay? And then the last thing I have to do, you guys, is to close off this opening. Now, you, if you want to make this look really professional and really nice, I would suggest that you get some red thread and just hand stitch that right down there to close it off. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to pick up the open area. I'm not gonna pick up my front layer of my fabric and I'm just gonna run a zigzag stitch down it, okay? Okay, and we now have a gator that's done that has got a filter pocket on the inside and the elastic is gonna stay up around your face, okay? And it's got a nice length to it. So I will put this on and show you what it looks like. And if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday in this bonus edition. I hope you like this project on making a 100% cotton gaiter with a filter pocket and the step-by-step -step video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. If you have any questions, please add them to the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other DIY projects.